Following on from my previous videos of cracking WEP and WPA security, I'm going to try and crack WPS security. Now again, I've got all the commands on the left side here that we're going to be using, and I've got my Backtrack 5 environment fired up ready. So we're going to go ahead and open a terminal window, and I'm just going to use airmon to make sure that my wireless interface is there. As you can see, WLAN 0 is there. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and start monitor mode straight away. I won't be spoofing the MAC address on this particular attack, but you can see the previous videos if you want to know how to do that. So there we go, we've got the monitor mode enabled on Mon0 again. And we're going to use a program called WASH, and you use the dash I to specify the interface, which is Mon0. And what WASH will actually do is look for access points in range that are weak to the kind of WPS crack that we're going to be running. Now, if you get um, problems here with bad FCS and you get some errors with that, just run the command again, but add a dash dash ignore and then dash FCS on the end, and that should resolve it. So there we go. This is now looking for any access point in range that would be weak to a WPS attack. And as you can see, we handily have a WPS penetration test network here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and copy the BSS ID of that network. And we're going to use a program called Reaver to attack the WPS registrar. So we do Reaver-I, specify the interface of Mon0, dash B to then specify the BSS ID of the access point we'll be attacking. And then we're going to use dash VV, which will actually just give us a slightly more verbose output so we can see exactly what it's doing. Now, one of the great features of Reaver is that because this takes quite a long time to attack an access point using WPS, if you have to cancel the command halfway through an attack, it will actually store the session for you, and then you can just use the Y command to start from where you left off. Now, as you can read in the blog, the WPS cracking can actually take quite some considerable amount of time, and the access point that I'm attacking here has got some attack mitigation in there, and that it has got um, a lockout period when you try a pin number incorrectly a certain number of times it will lock you out. So this is basically the attack here and it will continue going until it has found the correct pin for you at which point it will stop and output the pin to the screen. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cancel the command there because I've already cracked the pin on this particular access point and I'm actually just going to go ahead and run the next part of the attack to demonstrate. So it's Reva-I, Mon0 again, specify the BSS ID and then you need to enter the pin number that the first command will recover for you. Now, I've made a note of the pin number here, which is 67873524. So you go ahead and start Reaver again using the pin number after you've recovered it. And as you can see here, once you've got the pin number for WPS, which is only a matter of time to crack, it doesn't require any clients to be connected to the network, and the command that you saw me run previously is the only one that's required. So you simply run that command against the access point until it recovers the pin, which can take anything from four to upwards of 30 hours. In my case, it took almost 18 hours to crack the pin number. And then you simply rerun the command with the pin, and it will recover the WPA pre-shared key for you. With this, you can then connect to the access point, WPS penetration test, insert the WPA pre-shared key, which is just the WPA key to log onto the network, and then you can successfully connect and authenticate to that access point. Now the problem here is that if somebody does realize that somebody's using their Wi-Fi network without authorization, and they go and change the WPA key, if you make note of the pin number and keep that, you can simply run this command right here again, and whatever they change the pre-share key to, it will recover the new key, so you can then just log onto the network with the new key again.